Over a year ago now, I installed coilovers on my 2016 F3340i. And let me just get this out of the way first and say I absolutely love the suspension system and I love the way the car feels now. But that being said, there are some drawbacks that I'd like to talk about that maybe you should consider if you're looking at buying coilovers for your own car. I can guarantee you that I drive the car slower now than I used to with the factory suspension system. The reason for that is I drive this car exclusively on city streets. I've never tracked it and I encounter quite a few potholes and speed bumps and other obstacles in my day-to-day -day driving. And when you have coilovers on your car, you have less ground clearance and you also have a much stiffer spring rate and just a stiffer overall suspension. So what that means is you have to slow down because you need to give yourself more reaction time to try to avoid obstacles and uh, slow down. And also you need to physically take bumps at a slower speed because taking a speed bump, for example, at 20 miles an hour is, or 10 miles an hour is a lot different than taking that speed bump at uh, 50 miles an hour. Here's, here's what I'm talking about right here. Some pretty serious bumps, some serious potholes too. And I mean, you definitely feel it a little bit. I took that at about 10 miles an hour. It can be a little bit annoying sometimes because I'll see a Range Rover in front of me or a RAV4 or a Ford Explorer or something and they'll just be flying over some bumps. And then I have to dramatically slow down to go over those same bumps and uh, it's kind of, uh, fr it's not really frustrating. I knew what I was getting into when I got coilovers, but it's just funny that over city streets that are rough, I think a Ford Explorer would be faster than my car. In my case, you know, it's not unbearable and I still daily drive this car with the suspension almost on the stiffest setting. So I think it's totally worthwhile. Like if you're still, if you're considering getting coilovers, I don't think that should be a deal breaker. And the reason for that is the, uh, the car drives like night and day compared to how it used to drive with the factory setup. I fell in love with this car again when I installed these coilovers on, on this car because it was just very wallowy and did not feel like a sports car at all from BMW with the, uh, this is just the base F30. I mean, it's a 340, but it didn't have the M Sport package. So it was just the base suspension. And uh, it's a night and day difference. So going through corners and bra hard braking and hard accelerating, you you don't have as much die. It doesn't have as much squat. Um, and the body roll is drastically reduced compared to stock. There is still some, but it's pretty minimal. I don't have the car as low as I used to have it. I used to have it pretty low and um, I raised it up because I was sick of having to do mental, you know, uh, calculus and try to figure out, oh, is that driveway going to be high enough? Am I going to make it over that driveway? You know, is this pothole going to rip off my bumper? This is my only car. So I kind of got sick of driving like that very quickly and decided to raise the suspension. And now I have it pretty high. It'll actually clear parking stoppers. It'll clear most driveways head on. I do still try to take them sideways just as a little bit of an extra precaution, but um, I can take most of them head on without any problems. So that's the good thing about getting height adjustable suspension is that you can actually decide where you want the car to sit. And if it's not where you want it, you can just change it. That being said, you can set up your suspension wrong. And I definitely don't know everything about suspension, but one thing that seems to be very important is corner balancing. And uh, I remember watching some video somewhere and the person explained it as um, basically think of a chair or a table that has one leg shorter than all the other legs. It's just not gonna sit right. And what that's gonna lead to is um, the car being less predictable or, or unpredictable in certain driving situations. For example, if the car's not corner balanced right, when you take a left-hand turn, you might have a drastically different response than with a right-hand turn. And when you brake, the car might pull to one side. So getting the corner balance is definitely important. And um, if you're dialing in your ride height settings, obviously you're gonna be changing your corner balance. So the, the way I did it, and 
it's not the right way to do it really because the right way to do a corner balance is to use scales so that you can actually verify it with numbers but the way i did it was i got the factory ride height measurements at all four corners and then i dropped the car proportionally um at each corner and in my case they were more or less equal at each corner so i just dropped the car at an equal level but it's still lower than stock so a little bit of a workaround if you don't have scales or you don't want to find someone with scales or pay for scales and uh, it worked for me so you know i would 100 percent do this modification again no question and i think if you're on the fence about coilovers those are some things to consider pros and cons you'll have to decide for yourself what is going to be more important to you is it going to be more important to have a car that can cruise over speed bumps and cruise over road imperfections and not worry as much and then maybe get on corner as well or is it going to be worth it for you to get a car that or to modify your car such that the car is a little bit less comfortable but uh, handles better and in my opinion, looks a lot better too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a like and a comment down below. And also, if you'd like to see more car content like this, consider subscribing to me.